What entails in a marriage is very different from what entails in a relationship. When people do not understand this, they will destroy the very purpose of marriage. Because even though you have a partner you love and both of you are planning to wed soon, does not mean he or she is your spouse. Marriage is a divine covenant that is instituted by people who are willing to spend their lives together and die together. The relationship is supposed to lead to marriage because it is through it that you watch before time so you can couple your partner's lifestyle and behavior. This is why you must draw a thick line between the both of them. That someone is your boyfriend or girlfriend doesn't make them act in the role of a married spouse. You have to know how to keep your relationship pure before marriage. Everyone will be tempted to defile the thick line and boundary between relationships and marriage, but you can learn to destroy that with some certain tips. Number one, avoiding cohabiting. The matter of cohabiting is one to ponder upon and take very seriously if you want to avoid defeating and destroying the purpose of your relationship with that particular person. Cohabitation simply means you living with the person in the same house. This is most popular in the West, where you go to houses and you see men and women staying together, but they are not yet married. And when you ask them why, they say it's because they love each other. It's not about loving each other. It is about taking practical wisdom and steps to sustain what God has planned for your marriage before you get into it. God does not support cohabitation, especially in this generation. This has been seen as normal for teenagers to cohabit with their partner when they are not married with the view that this is what will assure them that they will be with each other forever. That is just deception because there is a lot of dangers in cohabitation. One of the things that lead many into sexual sins like fornication is self-confidence. This is the beginning of the chain. Like that is just the start of all sin. When people start to cohabit, they think they are doing it for goodwill and a good cause until they find that they begin to have an unholy urge towards their partner. Even though both of them are staying in different rooms, it is not possible that after a while, both of them will not sleep in the same place even though it is the parlor and then after a while there will be emotional involvement and then sex comes and destroys the essence of the relationship. This is why we tell those who are in courtship that they should keep a little distance from each other. That does not mean that when you keep your distance from each other, your love for each other will dry up. If it was a genuine love that both of you had, avoiding cohabitation with the one you love is a purifier and it keeps you pure before marriage. Number two, set boundaries. Unlike avoiding cohabitation, when we talk about setting boundaries, we are talking about setting a thick wall in our communication and interaction. The reason for this is to guard your thoughts and minds so that you will not be polluted. Much sexual involvement between partners in love before marriage is a result of a polluted interaction. That is why it seems as if the net has been the most dangerous advancement of sexual perversion. Most times when people are in relationships, they want to show and demonstrate to their spouse that they love them so much and consider them their only focus. In doing that, they will make sure that they will keep communicating with them so that their trust will never fade away. They will chat from the beginning of the day till the night, even as late as 11 in the night, just to demonstrate their heart of intimacy and love for this person, not knowing that they are giving room for evil thoughts to begin to develop in their minds and hearts so that they begin to act in a certain way. All of a sudden, they begin to send texts of romance and they begin to use pornographic sites to strengthen their romantic life for each other. And before you know it, 
they begin to discuss how they will meet in private as they fall prey to the temptation of sin. This is how unwanted pregnancy in teenagers starts, because of unnecessary lust. It did not start as sex first. It started as romance, just to show that they love each other. And then it goes to chatting for long hours, to meeting physically, and then to physical interactions between each other. That is why you should set boundaries between each other. Number three, involving people as watchmen in the relationship. This does not mean there should be no privacy between both of you, or there should not be space between both of you. When we talk about involving people as watchmen in a relationship, we are not saying that you should look for people and tell them that they should watch both of you. But we are talking about having friends that you can trust and telling them about matters of your relationship because there are many times in life that God speaks through our closest ones. Sometimes, because of our emotional involvement in our relationship with a person, we cannot perceive the leading of the Lord to stop doing something that will cause us to fall for sexual temptations. When you have these people, they can speak to you free from their hearts and tell you this, and that is what you should avoid. These people will give you signs and indications that at this point, you are going beyond what you should be doing with this person you are in a relationship with. Their words might seem even bitter and painful to your heart, but it is the help that God is giving to you. They might even say it when you are just speaking casually to them. You can't trust your emotions. There is no way you can trust your emotions. Your emotions can lead you astray, but you can control them by informing these persons about your movements. If the person tells you that both of you should be going on a date, that's not bad when you inform these watchmen or watch women over your lives. They will tell you whether it is a good choice to follow the person or not. When you love someone, it will be very hard to probe and judge them for what they are doing outside, but these can watch for you and deliver you from the dangers of regret and heartbreak in the future. This is applying wisdom to help you maintain purity in your relationship. You should know by now that purity is not a gift from God. It is not one of the gifts that God gives a person. Purity is an exercise in that you have to decide that you will work on yourself so that your marriage can be honorable to God because you have defiled your matrimony bed before time. Anything done with patience is always perfect and brings satisfaction. Do not live in independence when you are engaging in your relationship. Involve the friends that you can trust so that they can be like a watch for you. 